awesome chat is brought to you by sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com and listeners like you support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast Hey guys, it's an awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, lovely Beachview neighborhood Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready for another great chat. We talk to people in and around and outside the Pittsburgh area doing great things in podcasting, technology, community, whatever awesome things we can come across. Video games sometimes too. And today is one of those cases we're going to talk to a fellow podcaster about what she's been doing in the space. In the meantime, please subscribe to everything in the awesome channel on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course the video versions on the awesome cast uh, YouTube and Facebook pages, and check out everything at awesomecast.com, including this, including the main awesome cast, as well as our awesome tip series with Chilla that's been uh, telling you how to use your iPhone and your Samsung devices. And we're going to have some cool stuff coming up with that with iOS 11 as well to get you guys updated. So we got a, a fantastic guest here in studio. Uh, she does the Marta on the Move podcast, Marta Napoleon Mazzoni. You nailed it. All the names. You did. I got them all. All the names. <laughs> I'm really, you know, you know, like, oh yeah, Marta, you know, Marta on the move. Like to me, that's your name. Well, that makes it really easy. <laughs> it does absolutely. And I don't know a lot of people named Marta, so it's 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 pretty simple for me. If it was like Amanda on the move, exactly, or like exactly. Jill on the move, right? Yeah. So, um, so you, we, you've been, of course, been on the Awesome Cast before, but this is the first chance we've had to really kind of dive in. And, and what do you do in the podcasting space? So, tell us about Marta on the move. So Marta on the Move uh, was created about three years ago. I just had my third anniversary. Um, and it basically took me this long to figure out that I, I pretty much talk to people that move me um, and find out what moves them. <laughs> that took about three years <laughs> to figure out. Um, so, so, so it took you three years to get your tagline concept down. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And it's so hilarious because, I, I mean, I do these intros for my podcast and it's very much like, uh, hi, this is Marta Mazzoni, and I feature interesting people and places in Pittsburgh, surrounding areas, pop culture, travel, uh, inspirations, and general nerdery. And they're all of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's basically what moves me. It's funny. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I had so, like an epiphany over a glass of wine like three weeks ago. It was <laughs> hilarious. I'm like, oh, that's sad. And we're, we're looking at a little bit of the website if you guys are on the video version. And that's, that's uh, what's your, you're up to, I see 90 something, 91 episodes here? Yes. Wow. 91. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's that's a pretty good, you know, some people are like, well, I don't know if I know I know what my podcast is yet. Like, it can change. It's going to change. Don't Absolutely. worry about it, people. It's fine. You're, the, the main reason why people get into podcasting is because they they are interested in something and they have something to say. So so don't worry about all that stuff. Just just get in there. <laughs> well, let's, let's roll back to the beginning. So what made, what what got you into podcasting in general? Uh, I got into podcasting because I was listening to a bunch of podcasts at the time. And I think it stemmed back, I've said this before, but I think it stemmed back, uh, when I was a kid, I used to interview all my stuffed animals because I had zero friends. I grew up like <laughs> on the reservation. Um, I didn't live in like a plan. It was like me and my brother and my sister. I'm, I'm the youngest, like six and eight years between us. So they didn't really want to hang out with me <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the time. And so I just hung out with, my animals my stuffed animals because i didn't have a real animal <laughs> it's, and uh, i would just uh interview them i would re-record over old um old cracker jack cassette tapes nothing nothing like queen or anything like that but the old cracker jack cassette tapes probably my mom's like Ugh, where where are they now Wait, what do you mean cracker jack cassette tapes? they were these cassette tapes that honestly i wish i had now with the old um voices like Don Rickles and uh, like uh, just some random people. I can't even remember some of them. I think Betty White was on one and they had, it was a red tape, like a red cassette tape. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, give a shout out and don't hate me. I was like eight, okay. seven or eight. So I had a re-record on my cassette tape like you did. And I would just, I was like, nobody's going to miss these. These are boring. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> so it's, it, it's not like it's not like you know, uh, uh, mom's favorite like Led Zeppelin or no, Poison no. or something. Like yeah. I'm sure, tr- I'm sure I would have been in trouble if I if I covered over my mom's Bon Jovi, for instance. Yes. Right. So yeah, that's great. I kept on to my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then then that just when podcasting came up, it just says, oh, yeah. I'll just bring my stuffed animals with me. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> my stuffed animals are now guests that I that that return the conversation. Fantastic. So I mean, I've graduated. And I think that's, I mean, that's pretty much why the, the first time I got in front of a microphone, it just felt really natural. Um, and I grew up doing theater and different things like that. And that always kind of felt unnatural for me. <laughs> like I would get very nervous and, um, shake a lot and I, I still enjoyed it, but it didn't just come in easily. And this came fairly easily to me. So mm-hmm. Was it just the um? Because you know, I, I've heard about that. You know, the theater versus the studio versus, uh, you know, in front of a camera and things like that. Is it you know people are better at certain controlled environments versus others, right? Yeah. Is, is that what you kind of found when in front of a microphone? Definitely. It just it it was just it was easier to hide behind a microphone. I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> Although I am branching out, I've done a couple like a bunch of live events, but those even feel natural as well. Like it's it, it's just a very different. Um, and I think singing was a big thing cause that it was musical theater. Mm-hmm. So getting up and singing anything is terrifying. And that's also I give props to anybody. You're also kind of used to the sound of your own voice at that point, right? Yes. A little bit more. Yeah. I'm stuck with this. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not going anywhere. And, and, and that's the thing that's what a lot of people run into is like, well, I hate, I hate how I sound, you know? Uh, nah, I like <laughs> how I sound. I mean, I, 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 I used to hate it. Like editing, when I used to go back and edit, mm-hmm. that was awful mm-hmm. because I was like, oh, dear God, that's somebody's going to listen to this. And then I just stopped worrying about it. Um, except the ums. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, you, we, we talked about generally just your guests are, are people that move you, but, you know, what what's kind of the, you know, what's kind of the breadth of that? Like, what kind of people are we going to find on your podcast? We're going to find people that basically found out what moved them to do what they're doing. Okay. So that's pretty much what it's going to be about. Like, I have I had the Pittsburgh Retro Gaming people in. Mm-hmm. They freaking love that stuff. And I love it, too. You mm-hmm. know, and we talk about that. Um, I've had Alec Baldwin on. And we talked about, you know, like, he he's a podcaster now and what like what got him into podcasting and things like that um yeah what rick Seebeck, he loves food <laughs> you know he loves to eat <laughs> and he talk loves about, to talk about it he loves to talk about it yes and history for sure um a regular that i have on my show is uh john shalkowski from uh the odd uh mysterious and fascinating history of pittsburgh and yeah that guy's just totally moved mm-hmm. um Awesome. And, and you talk about it a lot because you, you also are big on traveling. Yes. I and love, tell me a little bit about that and that connection. I love that. Um, so I started traveling uh, 2004. And my biggest thing is getting people to travel that really aren't comfortable with it, mm-hmm. um, especially solo travel, I think is really important. I think everybody should do it. Um, it's It's really a great way to find out what you really like because usually when you travel you're traveling in pairs or you're traveling in a group and you're you're kind of succumbed to what they want to do as a group you know as a group collaboration or sometimes not a collaboration um and it's so freeing to just go off on your own and say oh i'm hungry right now i'm gonna go here or oh, i'm gonna walk this way see what see where the night takes me and just like have no make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. So you really find out what you like from that. Um, And I've done a lot of volunteer projects, solo volunteer volunteer projects, and uh, I just love it. So I love like trying to open up people's worlds with traveling. And with news and media now, I feel like everybody's scared as well. They never say the good things. They always say the bad things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have to relay the news, but it's it's not as scary when you get out there. Um, I just got back from Morocco on a solo trip and I, I loved it. I, I, I was fine. You know, it felt very comfortable, but you wouldn't think a lot of people wouldn't think that might, especially people I talked to, they were like, no, why? 
you're crazy. I'm like, I'm not crazy. I got a little bit of that because I had a, I had a job I had to go on uh, in Thailand, and I remember. And even I do a lot of business traveling now in the last couple of years, and I still get my mom wants the flight number so she can keep an eye on oh, me. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm in my 30s, mom. I know. You don't need to. I know. You know. <laughs> I my poor mother. I do. I feel bad. My first trip, I um, uh, I I didn't even tell her, and I was living under her roof. I just booked like a month long, month and a half long, tomb excavation. <laughs> so tomb like, excavation. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually, I have an article coming out in local, in local magazine that I think, I think it's coming out next month about how that all happened. And I booked it and just told her I was going and I was young. I mean, I was like 23. Was it kind of don't bring a curse back with you or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, no, don't leave. Cause it's pretty smartphone. So mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're untethered. Yes. Yeah. I had to like rent a phone. It was like this big, you know? <laughs> so big flip kind yeah. of thing for you guys on audio yeah. i had like three <laughs> yeah i had like three calls i can make because each call was like ten dollars oh jeez. <laughs> oh, no it was a blast um talk about a little bit of you know you, you know having haven't done this uh for so long um you know what, what kind of opportunities have come up because of the podcast for you um i have some coming up can i talk about two events i have coming up sure okay because that's all right so I love spooky stories and uh, things like that. And me and John have done an annual um, true spooky stories of Pittsburgh um, night where we would invite people over, just friends, and they'd come in pajamas and bring wine and hang out and watch the podcast, just friends. And we had a, we had a blast. And so we've done it two years in a row. We make like sound effects and stuff, you know, like get all, get all into it. And, um, and this year we're like, you know what, we should, we should open this up to the public. So we did. And we're doing it on Friday the 13th. Ooh. Yes. At Carnegie Coffee Company upstairs. <laughs> yes. And ticketing includes like two free glasses of wine and free coffee and all of the true spooky stories that we come up with. So I'm pretty excited about that. So that's the first one. That So that podcasting has allowed me to fulfill my, <laughs> my, my nerddom in that. And then... Um, I've always wanted to be a game show host. It's just a thing. I love game shows. I used to love the newlywed game and, and the old game show network that, uh, only the old games like match game. So I have my 100th, uh, episode anniversary celebration, sorry, coming up. And on January 5th at city theater, I'm bringing back the match game for an evening and it's going to be awesome. That's great. I'm excited. Rick Seaback's coming and Kelly Mays. We have Magic by Lee Turbosic, uh, Music by Violet, and I'm going to be pulling contestants out of the audience. So, yeah, I'm pretty pumped for it. Nice, <laughs> nice throwback. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty pumped for it. I, uh, I couldn't get, I don't think I can get the orange carpeting um, <laughs> or the very thin microphone, but I'm going to try. It has to be something. All you need is a stick and a little lavalier mic, and you can just kind of roll I with know. that, right? I can't fake it, though, because <laughs> I know I'm going to start doing hand motions, and people are still going to hear me. I'll, be I'll like, just yeah. fall apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what's really surprised you from your time doing podcasting? Um, the support of people, I have to say. Um, friends and family especially i feel like everybody kind of feels like they're an island right now mm -hmm. um and i don't know just like the overwhelming support and love like anytime i need something or uh i, I need advice like you know because i need a fresh perspective and anybody's there like they're like hey yeah sure so um whether they find value in what i'm doing or they're just a really good friend mm -hmm. i appreciate it so that's that's been the most surprising Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else? Uh, anything else about the show you want to tell us about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, that's it. You can check me out. Mart on the move. There Tickets are on sale for my my match game. I'm excited. Mart on the move, <laughs> and be sure to tag us. We'll share it with the awesome casters awesome. out there uh, as well. So please check it out. It's a great podcast. A lot of great discussions going on there. I know I did listen to. Uh, I've listened to a handful of them, including the retro gaming one. Uh, that well. was a fun one. That, for was, me. that was a lot of fun one. It was like right in the wheelhouse. So uh, it was really cool. So check it out, martonthemove.com. If you have any questions about podcasting or anything, just want to hit up, you know. <laughs> 
What's the biggest tip for new podcasters? Listen. I, I have to say that's affected not only in myself and podcasting as a podcaster, as a host, um, but as a friend mm-hmm. and a family and a family member, people do not listen. Any like they just don't. They just they're waiting for their turn to talk. And that's one thing podcasting has taught me, I think, to be a better listener for mm-hmm. people. So if I go out, I genuinely want to hear what they have to say. So that's number one. Don't just rattle off. Just be like, yeah, um, I want to hear what people have to say. And that'll lead you to the next thing that you want to talk about. It'll just be organic. That is an interesting thing, you know, doing interviews like we're doing now. Like, I really have no prepared questions. And yeah. I don't know if you do anything in, in your thing. Um, you know, you just kind of like, I know you do X, Y, and Z. We'll just have a discussion about that. And it leads where it leads, right? Mm-hmm. I like that better. Like, I always do research on the person that I'm going to interview mm-hmm. as like, you know, a backup just in case they're just giving me nothing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, which is the worst. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you always have to fall back on that. But I'd much rather have it be organic and go with the flow and see where it takes us because that's the most interesting stuff that comes out. Absolutely. Or surprising stuff sometimes yeah. too. Um, cause I know, I know for me, it's a, uh, you know, I'll have somebody in here and be like, Oh, you worked on this. I, I had no idea. Yeah. You know, kind of situation. Yeah. So awesome. Check it out. Martyr on the move. Uh, check out the podcast, subscribe to it all, where all fine podcasts are downloadable, right? <laughs> <laughs> they totally are. They are awesome. And of course, please also subscribe to us at awesome chat anywhere. You can also find probably the same places her, her shows out too. just get us both in your subscription uh uh there and uh and become uh get, just you know get us in your ear holes uh check out everything at awesomecast.com and uh keep an eye out on the awesomecast facebook we like to do these live streams and these interviews whenever we can throughout the week and of course the main awesomecast is every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time and the shortcut is live.awesomecast.net if you just want to drop into our video page and see what's streaming. Thank you once again to our awesome guest, Marta. Thank you for having me. You guys have been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.